Reclaimed is the podcast about the woman's journey of reclaiming her power through somatic work, breath work, plant medicine, and conversations. I am Kyla Gagnon, and this is Reclaimed. Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back. I am jumping on really impromptu. I was having a conversation with uh, a woman on Instagram, a client of mine in, in my mastermind about a post that I just shared. And the post is, I'm actually just going to pull it up right now. It is about seeing all parts of you. So it says to the women who want their men to really see them, to hear them and to devour them. Then it leads you into the caption. It says being seen by your love, heard by your love, like really seen and heard comes from you seeing you. And I mean, really seeing you, your whole depth, all of you. The truth is most people don't understand the depth of themselves. They don't truly know themselves. There's so many parts of you that you've disowned, neglected, shamed, forgotten about, and that's not the vibe, babe. The power in a woman comes from her ability to truly know herself, a strong sense of self-confidence. And I say we're diving into her we're diving into this inside of her, which is a group program that starts in October. And so I was having this conversation with, with my client and she was like, I don't even know if I know what that means. Like, I don't even know if I do know myself and it might be that my language is a bit f- floofy <laughs> and not direct. Um, and so I want to clear that up a little bit here. We, and so this woman that I'm speaking to, she's very high achieving. She's very successful in her work. And I don't at this point know what, what is going on in her, in her personal life or her family life. But what I do know is she's very high achieving in her work. She's very good at what she does and has reached a high level of of financial success and, and, you know, numbers, success, client success. Oftentimes with women, people in general, actually men as well, but I'm speaking to women. Oftentimes when women are really high achieving and successful by the, you know, quotation, what we deem successful in 2024, it comes with the energy of very forward movement, action taking, driven, determined, um, very strong mindset. And that is all epic but it's all very masculine and that's great. We need that. We definitely need that, especially if you have goals and you want to be a high achieving, successful entrepreneur or human. We need that. What happens is we get really locked into that place. And for a lot of us, we actually haven't been taught any other way. And so in terms of like really seeing yourself, it means seeing all parts of you. And so that looks like acknowledging and being a witness to like really just sitting there and witnessing every single feeling that exists in you without trying to tell a story about it, without judging it, without making it bad or wrong, without trying to fix it or change it. And now a lot of us haven't been raised in that way. And again, the feelings, feelings and emotions and, and letting the emotion flow, that's feminine essence. That's, that's a big part of the feminine identity. And we have, a lot of us have been raised in households and societies where A, we didn't learn how to do that. What we actually learned is that that's inconvenient and annoying and unstable. And so what we learned instead is to get over it, uh, move on. It's not that big of a deal. Just like put your head down, move forward onto the next. Someone has it worse than you. Like what's the big deal? Stop crying. I'll give you something to cry about that kind of energy. And so we learn really honestly just by that and also by probably not seeing our parents explore their big emotions, we learn to stuff them down, push them aside, move on, next goal, next thing. It's not that big of a deal. And here we are left in these adult bodies trying so hard to have healthy relationships, be that romantic or platonic. And there's friction and we're, we're coming up against each other. And there's 
big emotions that feel like they're just like, oh, and you want to, it generally, when we have these unresolved big emotions, they show up for us now in our adult life as frustration, anger, super pissed off, maybe sad, but like not allowing that to come through. So again, generally when we don't allow sadness to come through, anger comes through, it's the next defense. And so we all have these relationships that kind of fucking suck. You know, they kind of suck. They're good sometimes. And then they're just hard and they don't feel easy. And we're wondering like, what is going on? And oftentimes we just end that relationship and go on to the next one, or we just suffer in silence, or maybe it's not so silent. Maybe we're pretty vocal about it, but we stay, we settle and nothing changes and nothing changes because we aren't allowing ourselves to really see the depth of who we are and allow those parts to be okay. So the truth of the matter, let me just have some water, is that until you truly, truly, truly acknowledge all of the feelings and emotions inside of you and let them be expressed in a way where you're not trying to fix it or shame it or judge it, you're just letting the anger be there, the grief, the sadness, the abandonment feelings, the rage, all of the feelings that come up for you. It's in cultivating a practice that you can give yourself time to feel that. And so inside of the HER program, I am going to be talking about this a little bit. And we talk about it inside of the the breathwork membership as well, is your emotions are actually just natural bodily functions. Excuse me just like a burp, just like having to pee, just like having to sneeze, just like having gas, all of it is a bodily function. And you don't, I mean, I don't, I assume you don't walk around trying to validate the fact that you have to pee or sneeze or trying to stifle it or not letting it come in and judging yourself for having to pee. I trust that you don't do that. And so my question is what is different about having to pee versus having the emotion of sadness or anger? There isn't a difference. And I know that you were raised to believe that there was, so was I, and it's it's been a lie. It, we were raised that way because our family and the people who took care of us didn't know how to be with their big feelings because they were raised by people who also didn't know how to be with big feelings. So we're in a different time now. And a lot of our purpose in this lifetime is to heal. It's to heal us and it's to heal the generation we bring forward and it's to heal the generation that came before us by doing things differently. And so for the women here and also for the men, if there's men listening, it's to be okay with having human feelings. You are allowed to feel all of it. You're allowed to feel all of it. I want to pull up this image here and I won't be able to show it to you on, on the video, but I'm just going to read some of these off. I was talking to a client. We we're talking about different emotions and oftentimes, you know, I'll say anger, sadness, grief, joy, pleasure, and I'll kind of stop there. And someone else said, well, how many more emotions are there? I'm just going to read you some of them. So there's, um, helpless, confused, anxious, energetic, cheerful, hopeful, creative, proud, aware, respected, faithful, nurturing, trusting, loving, thoughtful, responsive, pensive, relaxed, apathetic, isolated, stupid, remorseful, distant, sarcastic, angry, frustrated, jealous, selfish, irritated, critical, skeptical, confused, bewildered, discouraged, insignificant, Uh, overwhelmed, daring, stimulated, amused, playful, optimistic, successful, worthwhile, and on and on. There are a lot of feelings. And we have not learned in our younger years how to be with them. And so when I speak about in that post, knowing yourself, it means you've experienced and you allow yourself to experience all parts of you that arise because they are all correct. If you feel any certain way, it is correct. It makes sense based on likely past experiences in your childhood. When we're triggered in this current state of our adult being, it's often not like 
if Cam says something or a friend says something that pisses me off, playing with my hair here, it's sure there's a part of adult Kyla. There's a part of me that's like, mm, okay, hold on a minute. But the real trigger, the real, f- like the, the emotion that has that like oomph behind it is from a younger part of me that originally had that trigger that never was able to express and experience the emotion that came with it. And so that emotion just stayed almost like looping in my system. And that's what happens. So if we think about how many experiences we had through our childhood, youth, early 20s, into our 30s, where primarily in our younger years, where there was an emotional charge, something happened, and we weren't able to actually process it fully and come to a completion in that emotional experience, we hold it. And so when your partner says something or does something or doesn't do something or doesn't say something and it triggers you, what's happening is that that younger part of you that originally had that pain point is triggered and she comes online and she is, she's quite likely immature because she's younger. And so she's going to respond very immaturely, right? That's where the lashing out comes. That's where the stonewalling comes. That's where the ultimatums come. It comes from a younger part of you. It does not come from your anchored goddess. It does not come from your adult queen woman. It doesn't come from her. It comes from the preteen. It comes from the child who's like, "Eh, I don't like this, right? And you can feel it. I know you can feel it in your behavior. I know when I'm there. And so when we don't allow ourselves to meet all of those parts of us, to acknowledge that, hey, this part of me exists. Holy wow. Yep. She exists. And that's okay. Next time she comes up, I'm going to let her be here in a contained way. We're not going to let, you know, our huge emotions come up when we're cooking dinner for the family or when we're at Thanksgiving with the family or when we're at work, we're going to, we're grown. We're going to take care of that in our own time and space because that's our stuff to take care of. But when, when women are in this like high achieving, super forward moving action, taking life path in that really rigid masculine space, it makes sense that they're not connected to the feminine. It makes sense. They're not connected to the wisdom of their body and the information in their body, which is ultimately your emotions and your feelings because we've been told not to. So all of that makes sense. It, it is a bit of work and it's, it's not a long stint of work and it doesn't actually have to be that hard. I actually find this work really beautiful and powerful. When we allow these parts of us to be seen, we're stepping into a world um, known as IFS or internal family systems or parts work where we are starting to acknowledge that this part of me exists and that's okay. This part of me exists and I'm not mad at her. I'm not judging her. I'm not shaming her or him. This part of me exists and I'm actually maybe for the first time ever just going to let them exist here. I'm not going to try to change them. I'm just going to let this feeling be here and I'm going to feel it and I'm going to feel it and I'm going to feel it. What happens? One of our biggest problems, and again, I'm going to go into this in the HER program, is we start to storytell about the feeling. Well, yeah, I am really sad, but it's because da, 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 da. Well, now we've just, we've stopped the whole process. We're no longer feeling sad. We're now thinking sad. We're thinking about it. We're storytelling and we're back in the masculine and we've, we've again neglected, we've left the feminine behind. And so the real work is like, I'm not going to storytell about this. I don't need to prove my feelings. I just am having a feeling. And so for those of you who are feeling like you're not sure if you know yourself fully and you do have a hard time being with your emotions, or you do have a hard time being in your body and, and listening to your body, or even the Even maybe me saying, listening to your body, you're like, what is she talking about? I trust that you're likely more connected to your masculine energy, which is definitely where I was for a really long time. And it's where this beautiful client of mine is as well. And so this is the work that happens inside of my coaching work, inside of the group work. This happens a little bit more slower, but it happens still inside of the membership. And, and I really urge you to tune in. If we ignore the body for too long, it, it will, it will start to clap back, you know, and it'll come with injury, with ailment, with illness. It, it wants to be heard and we've been ignoring it for so long. And so again, my, my whole like slogan or, or mission of helping women reclaim their power. This is it. This is what I'm talking about. It's coming back to the body. It's listening 
to when the emotions are creeping in and it's giving yourself space to actually feel that so that you can come into a more whole self. You become a more whole self when you start to integrate all of those parts that you once pushed away. It's not too late. It's never too late. It's a beautiful process of actually self-honoring and self-loving when we can bring those parts of ourselves in, right? The little girl whose dad was like, let's get to work. Go, go, go. We don't have time for this. Get over it. It's, it's giving her a chance to be like, Hey, (laughs) I just, I I don't want to get over it right now. And actually being the loving adult that gets to just, Hey, I'm right here with you, girl. Just, you got it. You, you're allowed to feel sad. You're allowed to be really upset right now, really disappointed and just let yourself feel it. It's really beautiful work. It's so beautiful. And, and I get that if this is new, all of this is really new to you, that the language can feel like, "Mm, I don't really understand what she's talking about. And so ask questions, message me. I, you know, I try to simplify with my language, but sometimes uh, I can't. (laughs) So if anything I'm saying is piquing interest or you have questions about it, find me on Instagram. If that's how you have access to me um, at Breathe with Kyla, or maybe you have my email or maybe you have my phone number or maybe you have me another way. I I love having these conversations. So please bring them forward. Uh, I'm really not sure what date it is right now. I'm going to try to pop this out before um, end of September. I might even sneak it out next week. This is this is what we're teaching inside of her. And the her program is, it's a group program for women really wanting to, I say, evoke that inner goddess, awaken that inner goddess. And, and with that, when we're awakened in that way, our partner meets us in a new way, our relationships skyrocket, the way we show up in our business changes, the way we show up in our family changes, right? The way we feel about ourselves shifts, our confidence grows. There's this whole new sense of like, whoa, like self, like there's more of you. How could you not be confident in that? And we're connecting for 10 weeks. We start October 1st and it is early bird pricing until the end of August. I'm just going to make sure that I get this out before the end of August, early bird pricing before the end of August. So today is the 27th. We've got a few more days left. If you're interested, the link is in the show notes, or you can just reach out to me and I'll send it over to you. I love you so much. I hope this is helpful and I look forward to chatting.